Hello and welcome from Buenos Aires, Argentina, to this episode of Crossing Borders with Nathan Lustig, where Nathan's conversations with entrepreneurs doing business across borders and the people who support them, with a focus on those that have some connection to Latin America. My name is Josefina Dominguez, and I am an editor for Latin List, a proud sponsor of the Crossing Borders podcast. Sign up for our weekly updates on latinlist.com to get a summary of the week's biggest headlines in Latin American tech news. Nate's guest today is Maria Fujihara, founder and CEO of Sinai Technologies, a decarbonization platform that is tackling climate change by enabling more intelligent carbon emission measurement, reporting, mitigation, and scenario analysis. They talk about the importance of Sinai's solution and what decarbonization looks like for a company. Maria also reflects on her lessons learned from the nonprofit sector and provides advice to other entrepreneurs about getting past gatekeepers when starting out in the startup world. We hope you enjoyed this conversation with Maria Fujihara. Hey, Maria, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being willing to do it. Thank you for inviting me, Nathan. Where are you in the world today? I'm physically in San Francisco, California. And where are you from originally? Brazil, Sao Paulo. And how long have you been in the Bay Area? Bay Area, I think a little more, a little over three years now. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about your business. What are you working on? Um, yeah, so Sinai, in Sinai, we are doing, we are building a decarbonization platform, um, which basically helps big corporations to um, manage their carbon emissions and um, be able to allocate capital for mitigation options that are going to help them to reduce emissions and have returns on their investments and also achieve emissions reductions targets and comply with a bunch of policies, um, external policies, internal policies, and, and so on. So what does this look like in practice for a company? Let's say I'm a resource heavy company and I want to do a better job protecting the environment. And, and what do I do when I, when I talk to you and use your product? Yeah, so our product, I, I think the biggest differentiator for us is that we, help com- we guide companies across their entire carbon journey from the beginning until the end. So really the first step uh, to understand carbon is actually accounting for your carbon emissions. And when I say carbon, I mean any kind of all these seven different gases, Kyoto gases, uh, which are which stands for the greenhouse gases, right? So it's just carbon equivalent. That's that's what I mean. But um, so the first piece is actually trying to understand where are the sources of emissions that they have. So any kind of fuel combustion that is, I don't know, stationary or mobile combustion, if they meaning if they have fleets or if they have, I don't know, ovens or things being burned on an oven, um, if they have, if they are consuming electricity, if they are generating waste and so on. Um, once we understand the sources, we calculate the greenhouse gases associated with the sources uh, based out of um, methodologies and many um, other regulations, depending on the location. But then the step after this is actually understanding um, many things that can happen at the same time. So if the business keep growing, what are the emissions that are going to occur in the future if you don't change anything but then if you change something if you change for example uh i don't know a coal blast furnace or a, an oven or a, 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 or you you buy electric vehicles um then these are considered mitigation options these are actually options included in your operations um, and you need to understand how much these options cost to be implemented and how much they can reduce. So we help customers to model all these options, all these future scenarios, um, the scenario where you don't change anything, which is you keep doing as business as you know it. So business as usual scenarios, scenarios based on mitigation options, how much do they cost, how much they can reduce and scenarios based on external regulations or internal regulations. Like if you have a target, um, how far away you are from your target, how much is it 
it going to cost to achieve your target? If the policies change, what do you need to change internally? So we really help them to put everybody on the same page, meaning people from different departments on big corporations in multinational companies that are huge, that many that, that have many people operating. And um, we really help with the calculations. So this is really helpful for them to figure it out what are the potential pathways for the company as the data changes or as things get updated and as things happen like in a more dynamic uh, world. Does that make sense? It does. And we'll jump deeper into it in a few minutes here, but I wanted to jump back into your background. <laughs> Did you always know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur or is it something that came up in your career path? Uh, no, I never knew, actually. It, it, it came to me, I think. It found me. Um, I have actually worked for a nonprofit, the Green Building Council Brazil, for eight years. Um, and I, I think I worked for an office before that. But honestly, my entire career was from, yeah, it was in, the, in most of my career in this nonprofit. And, and then I, I did a lot of volunteer job work. Um, but working with the nonprofit gave me a good perspective of um, the, the entire like role that you, you need to build around a nonprofit to, to sustain it. Because nonprofits in Brazil are very different than nonprofits in the US. But anyway, um, in Brazil, we really had to, to create a market for the, the private sector to, to, you know, to, to buy whatever we're trying to sell and to create and to work with the government to establish the policies and regulations. So I, I, I was in, in constant contact with both sides and, and then always knew that it is the private side that is really going to change things, even though we believe that policies, especially related to climate change are really good because they, they enforce um, faster the changes that are needed, but it's really the private sector that has the money to invest on it. So um, I knew it, I wanted to, to, to do something. In, if I had to work again in this space, it was going to be in a private company. But at that point, I already knew that I, I didn't want to report to anyone anymore. I kind of wanted to build my own thing. And, and then that's when I started Sinai, I guess. What was that inflection point that kind of pushed you to start your own thing? What what was the the spark that made you do it? So, um, well, the really the feeling um, I I had the feeling when I came to the U.S. because you know the the U.S. has this has this idea that you know you can build businesses here that are going to be famous all over the world so I kind of wanted but I, I had no clue where to start and then when I was um, I was taking a break just thinking of my next step I, I got accepted into Singularity University and then which is a university that talks about future of everything, future of work. What what are the things that are going to happen in the future? They it's a futurologist university in a way, and and then I moved to to Silicon Valley. Uh, to, that was 2017, May 2017, um, and then this this place is where really the they planted the seed because the 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 goal of the 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 program that I did there is actually to build companies and they teach you how to do it. They teach, teach you how to do it, everything from the beginning and to the end. And they bring a lot of people so you can iterate in your idea, prototype, design fast, fail faster. And, you know, things like uh, all, all the things that entrepreneurs have to learn. I learned in this four months of incubation, basically to incubate the idea and really put that, that take that idea out of my head and put it into practice. Uh, so I think it was a great, great school for that. It, it, it was, I learned really fast on many things. And then, and then I stayed in the U S and then I moved to, to San Francisco right after this. And then it was another, let's say um, college that I, I've been through because people in Silicon Valley, they really have, 
they talk about this all the time. And, you know, if you're hiring someone, they already are asking you a bunch of hard questions on many stuff, many parts of the business. So they are thinking about building businesses all the time. It's a very different mindset than uh, in Brazil, even though I think Brazil has a great uh, innovative network, I think the perspective of building uh, successful businesses is different. You know, like, and you talked about differences, not just between Brazil and the U.S., but going from the nonprofit world to going through YC and starting your own business. What were some of the similarities or lessons you learned from the nonprofit world that benefit you today? And what were some of the biggest differences or challenges in switching over to the startup world? No, that's a great question. Um, I, uh, I think the, the biggest learnings from the nonprofit is that, so nonprofits in Brazil, they have to make money. Like it's not for profit, but they, they, they have to find a way to sustain themselves, right? And I think I, we, I, I joined the Green Building Council when I was, when we were like four people, I was literally their first intern. And then, and then I left, there was like 15 people, the, the organization grew so much. And, and it was most of my, part of my work that made that happen. And my work was actually to find sponsors, was to find uh, was actually to create products from for the organization and it was to find uh, revenue streams uh, where we could sustain ourselves right so the organization today is mo um, it has the biggest revenue stream comes from courses and educational materials but I created this new revenue stream which was the, cer the cer home certification for the country um, I, I helped to establish all that. So I think uh, trying to figure that out it, it, throughout my career was a huge entrepreneurship lesson that every entrepreneur should know, right? How to make money before you, you ask for money for, from investors, at least. I think that's a good, great lesson, which sometimes it's not very common money in Silicon Valley actually this is the the piece that's in Silicon Valley that when I arrived here I was looking at all the startups with zero revenue zero even zero product raising a lot of capital and I was like oh my god there's so much money here and people they're just giving away like that for ideas and and for me is it's always been different when I raised my first round I already had good revenue. I, I was, I'm not, we are not uh, profitable yet, but I had a prototype. I, I had proven that, you know, that there is traction, that I have traction, that I have someone paying, a big company paying for it, that I have, I was able to put together a team that, you know, that things are moving forward. Um, I don't know if there was, there were some differences. Re maybe there was like a lot of biases related to, me being a woman, a Latin American woman, trying to raise money out of an, an idea. But I'm actually glad that I wasn't able to raise. Uh, that made me to really um, try to prove myself and to prove that I could do it. Um, and, and I did it, or at least I'm doing it. <laughs> that answers your question. It does. And can you talk a little bit about how it felt to be there with an idea that you thought was great and not be able to uh, raise with just the idea when you see lots of money flowing all around you? Yeah, very lonely, to be honest, very lonely, very, very tough um, at the beginning. So I didn't have a salary for two years, right? I was basically living out of my own expenses and money that I had to ask from, for my parents and like to loan me and um, and it was tough like it was two years of like really living the lowest budget possible just really trying to survive to keep doing it and I had great people that like even my parents they didn't want me to go back to Brazil until I had that figured out right they were like I'm not paying I was like I was begging for them to pay me my ticket back to Brazil cuz I didn't have money to go back and they were like no you're staying there figure it out the only thing we're paying for is is for your visa so apply for a work visa and figure it out so I had to create my company apply for a one visa I had to I had to figure it out everything right 
Um, and and I think I think it's it's just part of people's personal you know personal pathways and personal stories and the things that they have to go through to learn. Um, I think that 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 p that part of my beginning where everything was really scared, like I, I didn't have all the resources or, or you know very limited resources, very basic resources to just keep me surviving. I think that was a great piece of learning that, you know, today I'm so careful with money. I'm so careful with the things I spend. I'm always looking, you know, to, to hire on, on the best terms, to actually raise money also on the best terms. Uh, so I think that at the end made me a better person and a better entrepreneur and, and definitely is going to reflect in many of the things that I will have to do it in the future. Um, but it does feel lonely and it does feel like you're never going to make it if you're not a white man and uh, and from the US or at least you know that has your native speak speak in uh, english but but at the end i did it so i mean i'm doing it again so i i feel i feel very fortunate um to to be able to gone through this and and actually raise above all this stuff and what advice would you give to other people who are maybe in your similar situation from a couple of years ago who are kind of going through the struggle now, uh, whether they're out of their home country or even in their home country and they're not able to raise or um, they're, they're not able to, uh, to, to push as far as they'd like to um, with some gatekeepers in the way? What, are you, what, what would your advice be to them? Well, um, first, are you really sure you want to do this? Um, I think um, if you are really sure, uh, yeah, I think you should really ask yourself that if what you're doing really, it's really important for your life and for others people, other people's life, uh, because you are going to change a lot of people's lives, you know, your employees and your customers and investors and everybody that believes in you. So be sure where you want to go and what you're doing. Um, and if that's really what you want to do. And, and then the second one, if you're sure, don't give up ever because um, there are going to be a lot of no's. I think there are going to be more no's than yeses. But the the yeses are going to move you so much faster in, in, in the direction, in the right directions, I, I hope. But, um, but yeah, so you definitely need to learn how to face the no's. They are always going to be majority. So don't give up. Well, that's, that's good advice. And so going into, you talked about having a passion and, and being sure you really wanted to do it. Um, I'm going to tee you up for an environmental question. Why is it so important to solve the problem that you're trying to solve today? Yeah, so I also think that people should really choose carefully the problems that they're trying to solve and um, do things that really enhance humanity, I hope, in different ways, right? Um, so um, the things that we are doing it are really related to to basically the the planet we live in, right? So if we keep um, destroying it, the our house, our own environment, there are not gonna, not gonna be humans in the future. So um, I think what what I'm the, the problem that I'm trying to tackle, which is climate change, is much bigger than what exactly my solution is capable of but it's 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 one piece that it's a, a key important piece of you know how to move that needle um and i understand that there are many levels also of uh complexity in terms of climate change um i'm actually focusing on big corporations because i think they are the ones that have the data and the money to invest on this initially. I don't think the governments, again, are going to take us there. Um, and I don't think that um, um, 
small and medium businesses also are going to take us there because they also don't, they lack the understanding and they lack the data and they lack the money. So they won't be able to invest in this. But I do see a big opportunity in the consumer side, in the, in the, in the person, in the individual, because at the end, it, 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 the, everything it is the way that it is because we are still consuming and behaving on on a certain ways that are not beneficial for society. So the gas and oil companies still only exist because we are still buying diesel cars, right? And and because we want to live in these amazing buildings and blah blah blah. It's okay up to a certain point, but you you really really need to start shifting the way that you that you consume and the way that you behave, so you can look for companies that are um, really trying to do something, really trying to, to to move the needle you know, and and really transition to a low carbon economy. So I think there is a huge opportunity in the individual side. That's definitely the biggest challenge. Like that's where why I didn't start started with uh, helping individuals um, because you have to change their behavior. They don't care about the numbers. Like they don't care if they emitted a hundred tons of carbon. They don't even know what that means, but they care. They should care at least if they are buying diesel or, you know, charging their electric bikes. By the way, I just drive electric bikes around. I, I'm, a, I'm a vegan. I don't eat meat at all. So I think um, it, all this is small uh, ch changes in, in your day-to-day -day life is going to impact economy in a certain way and is going to oblige companies to change the way that they produce stuff and the way that they, that they you know, set up their own mechanisms for, for capital and stuff. So I'm looking more at the, at the company side, corporate side, but I think that there is a big potential for individuals to change um, and I hope we do make better changes as we grow as society and as individuals. Are there any books, blogs, podcasts, or documentaries you'd like to recommend to people, whether about startups or just life in general? Uh, well, yeah. So, oof, books, so many. Um, I'm actually now learning about the real story of humanity. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I think at the end, the real story of humanity is inside each individual because we are the ones making history right now. And at the end, history repeats itself always because we are not changing, we are not learning from our mistakes. So we keep making the same mistakes all over again. So I really like one podcast that is about this, like how to change your mindset and how to uh, rethink about, you know, the, the things that are that happening in your life, which is the Mind Body Green podcast. They also have a, a very cool website and on the entrepreneur side i really love product decoding um they talk about it's from sparrow ventures of a venture firm they are very product focused they bring all these product managers to talk about product development and i i really like it if you could go back to when you were first starting the business knowing everything you know today what advice would you give yourself to give myself i <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I know everything today, but, um, and I think I've, I've made very, I mean, the right decision so far, but I think the, I don't know, the advice maybe would be to be more patient. Uh, sometimes I'm an Aries, so I, I move really fast and I expect to see results even faster. Uh, I need to cool down sometimes and be more patient because Things sometimes don't happen in the pace that I'm expecting. What's up for the you and the business over the next, say, year or two years? What are some of the goals you want to hit? Uh, yeah, so we definitely are looking to close our Series A in the next two years um, and increase um, number of customers and revenue as well. But mostly... I think ship product um, as fast as possible uh, because it's so important and it's so needed. Uh, we already have so much, like so many 
uh, requests on on the product side on things that we could build but we just don't have the arms to build it or yet the money and you know pretty well startups we need to fo be very focused so we cannot just start building everything uh, even though I know that there is there there is a market for it we have to just prove some concepts before we are able to, to really focus on, okay, that's what we are building right now and let's move with that. So um, yeah, I just really hope we can ship product faster. So for that, we're definitely gonna be hiring in Latin America. Uh, our team is all over the world. So I'm looking to hire more in Brazil and other places in Latin America. And, um, and yeah, and, and increase our sales side as well. Well, it's going to be great to see you continue to execute on the vision of making the, the world a better place. Thanks for taking the time to do the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nathan. And um, yeah, I hope I hope I come back to tell you more about how, how it goes. <laughs> Definitely. We'll have to do a round two in the future. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Crossing Borders with our guest, Maria Fujihara. And thank you to Angel Andraca for producing this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend and give us a rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's the best way to share what's going on in Latin America's ecosystem.